Hello everyone and welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and you're joining me in my home in Vermont where I live with my husband, our two dogs, and our cat. So yeah, a lot has been going on. I think it's been, I think it's been like two weeks since I had a full podcast. Um, I had the spinning special episode um, last time. But uh, yeah, so there's a lot that's been happening and I have a lot to tell you about. Um, so I thought I would just update you on some things that have happened recently. So, uh, yeah, last week my husband celebrated his 30th birthday, uh, and we went fishing for his birthday and we both caught a fish. Um, yeah, mine was a little bit bigger than his. <laughs> I'll put pictures, um, and, and, uh, and yeah, and I made him a peanut butter cake, which is his favorite and it was a great day. So yeah, that was that was a big event, and also um, yesterday um, I went to Vermont Sheep and Wool. So it's actually going on today. Today is Sunday, October first. It's October, and um, I love October. So oh my gosh, yesterday the weather was so cold, like <laughs> almost a smidge colder than I wanted it to be. But I've been just dying with this heat that we've had like before yesterday um i think yeah the, the past two days have been cooler but they were before that they were so hot like indian summer kind of hot and i was just so over it i was completely cranky about the weather <laughs> um, i just want fall weather and i want to be able to wear sweaters and yes yesterday was super cold um i wore a long sleeve shirt and a like uh, like a Colombian fleece jacket over that and that was almost not enough um, <laughs> but yeah I was walking around the Vermont sheep and wool festival so <laughs> um, which was fun it was my first time going so um, yeah I I really enjoyed it it was um, not a huge festival um, but it wasn't too small either I thought it was really nice um, there were sheep and uh, alpaca and llamas and um, goats and there were lots of fiber e-vendors, so farms vending, there were um, indie dyers vending and uh, there you could buy fleeces, which I might have done, and uh, just like crafts and other things. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed it, and um, I'm a little bit like surprised that I've never been before, um, because <laughs> yeah, it's it's it was like a little over an hour drive for me to get there, um, but really not bad. I mean, in Vermont, especially where I live. Um, you know, we're used to driving a lot. It's just sort of how it is. And, um, uh, yeah. Uh, so an hour drive really isn't that bad for us. Um, but yeah, so, uh, I have some things to show you and I thought I would start with the sheep and wool, um, content and, and acquisitions and things. So yeah, today's video might be a little, um, here and there. Oh, um, also, yeah, I can't not announce this at the beginning. Like, I could save it towards the end, but I have to go ahead and just announce that um, I opened my own Etsy shop. So um, I've been playing around with that idea for, I don't know, a month or more, but seriously, you know, seriously thinking about it. And, um, and yeah, so I, I did actually open my Etsy shop, and I have a few items for sale and I'm going to talk about them at the end of the podcast but my store is called Vermont Dye Works and yeah I'm really excited I haven't made any sales yet but there are things available and and I'm definitely going to be talking about um my hand dyed yarn in this video so it's exciting and I just wanted to go ahead and let you know up front plus I have some things that I'm knitting that um, I died. So, um, yeah, it's exciting. So yes, so Vermont Sheep and Wool, I went yesterday and, um, I had a ton of fun. Um, so here's the little booklet that we got from the Vermont Sheep and Wool. It's the 29th annual, um, I want to say edition. <laughs> it's, the, it's the 29th time they had it. 
goodness gracious. Um, actually, so this is, I don't know, this may be T TMI, but um, uh, this was in Tunbridge, and I lived, um, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes from Tunbridge. Um, when I first moved, I moved to live with my dad, and my dad lived in this little nowhere town called Vershire. Literally, you just drive through it, and you have no idea that it even exists. Um, um, I lived there for a short period of time with my dad. So I actually used to live really, really, really close to this festival. And they, they have the uh, World's Fair. Uh, there's a Tunbridge Vermont World's Fair. There, I've never been to that one either, but now I want to go. Now that I've been to the, um, to the fairgrounds, now I, I want to go check out, yeah, the World's Fair. So um, yes, so this, uh, it's, it's actually going on today. Um, today is Sunday, October 1st. Like I said, happy October. This is like my favorite month, by the way. I got married in October and I just, I mean, can you see like the little pumpkin, um, wedding tree? Those are fingerprints that I did. I actually painted that tree and then like my guests put their thumbprint, um, on the tree and sign their thumbprint and that sign that has, it says wedding, you can kind of see it, and it has little leaves. Like, I painted that and, and made that wedding sign, and it was like a little arrow that showed the um, the driveway that my guests needed to take to get to our wedding. And yeah, so anyways, yeah, Vermont Sheep and Wool, um, yeah, for my first time going, I really enjoyed it, and I have some things to show you. So I think I'll just go ahead and, and to show you kind of what I got. Um, so first I'll show you the smaller items and then I'll get to like the big, big item. So yeah, I think was the first thing I got was these um, little wooden buttons and a wraps per inch tool. So this is a little hedgehog wraps per inch tool. So I can use this for spinning and I, you could also use it for, um, commercial yarns too if you wanted, but I can use it to um, check my uh, spinning. And yeah, he's super cute. He's a hedgehog. And from the same lady, this is her little bag that she gave me. Um, I don't know if it's Katrinkles or Cat Wrinkles. <laughs> Katrinkles? I don't know. <laughs> but um, this her little business card and she has an Etsy store. It's just, um, the, uh, I think if you just go to Google search Etsy and then the Katrinkles, it'll, it should pop up for you. Um, and yeah, I got these little buttons. <laughs> they say knit with love. I got two of them. Super cute, and you can um, sort of sew them on to a sweater or a project or whatever you want. And I think I've seen other people take some of their yarn and like split the plies and use one of the plies to um, to thread these so that it uses the same color yarn as your project, which yeah, I might do. Um, so that was it for her little booth. Um, like I said, she's on Etsy, and uh, I'll probably either will now or already have uh, posted. I took a couple photos. She had like a bunch of little baby sweaters with different buttons that she had shown off, uh, sewn on to show off like the different, um, her different products. So yeah, that's all I got from her. And then I got this, which just, I think I kind of like walked by it, was like, <laughs> like eyeballing it as I was walking by like ooh that's pretty and then <laughs> eventually came back and then once I touched it I was like oh oh that's soft <laughs> this is um this is Cormo and it has three natural colors um it, it just says it's three ounces of Cormo combed top one ounce of each color um, the farm is really cute. It's called Marshmallow Farm, and I think, I don't know where, um, Katrinkles is from, but
But I think this is the only thing that I bought that wasn't Vermont. This is, a, I think, a New York farm. So Marshmallow Farm, super cute name, super appropriate. Um, yeah, and I, I love this natural, I just love like the blend of the three natural colors. And I think this would make something really pretty. Um, maybe like a nice little natural shawl. Um, it wouldn't be a very large shawl. There's only three ounces. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure, but I just love that it's, I just love how it's natural. Does that make sense? Um, it's just naturally pretty. I don't know. So yes, and if you could feel this, you would have bought it too, because it is so soft. It is super squishy, actually. No, seriously, on the ride home, I kept saying, ooh, it's so squishy, you know, go like squish, squish. And my husband was like, stop saying that. Because <laughs> I only said it like 20 times. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. So then I went to, um, uh, doop. let's see, um, the Green Mountain Spinnery booth, which is sort of a bigger brand. I mean, they're not like the most well-known. I'm sure plenty of people have never heard of them, but Green Mountain Spinnery is sort of a big, um, well, it's a mill and yarn, yarn, I don't know how else to say it. There's a spinnery. And um, I actually went to their mill in, I think, June. So actually the same day I bought my spinning wheel. So I've had my spinning wheel for just slightly over three months now, I think. Yeah, because it's some, like, late, late October will make four months. So, yeah, just barely over three months I've had my spinning wheel, which I bought at Webs on the, or say, Shop Hop going on that day. Um, so I bought the Capricorn, um, their Capricorn, uh, weight. It's, it's bulky weight. And, um, I have been eyeballing this Capricorn yarn because, well, for two reasons. So one, it's, it's this really nice single plied, um, bulky and it's, um, 35% mature mohair, 65% fine wool. And so that mohair is goat. And I think that's why they named it Capricorn, of course, because Capricorn's a sign is the goat. And how do I know that? I'm a goat. <laughs> yeah, I am a uh, Capricorn. So yeah, I just couldn't resist. Like last time I was there, I almost bought this because I just think it's so cool. I just, I actually just really like it because it's because it's a Capricorn and I'm a Capricorn anyways <laughs> but I think this will make a beautiful winter white hat like I think a white hat that would just go with everything and because it's a bulky weight I could knit it probably you know in an hour maybe an hour and a half two hours depending if it had a pattern or something um, but yeah I was thinking these would make this would make a really beautiful winter hat that would just go with everything. So yeah, Green Mountain Spinnery. If you've never heard of them, you should check them out. They have um, quite a few different, um, you know, kinds of yarn. They have cotton. They have um, cotton wool mixes. Um, and I believe, I, I'm sorry, I don't know all the names of the different kinds. I think there's one that's like called Music or Muzak or something. Um, and one of their, one of their yarns was used to make a, um, oh, you know that men's knitting magazine, like ribbed, rib, something like that. One of their sweaters in that magazine, they used Green Mountain Spinnery's, um, yarn and it was really, really pretty. And I would knit my husband one if he would wear it, but I really don't think he'd wear it because <laughs> he'd. My husband is like a t-shirt guy year round. Like even in the dead of winter here in Vermont, when it's super duper cold, he still wears a t-shirt. I'm not kidding. And actually that's, that's not that unusual for Vermont guys. My dad, um, my dad actually would wear shorts in the winter until like it got, it'd have to be like really, really cold for him to stop wearing shorts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, and then the last thing is so special. Like, oh, it's just... So I follow this lady on Instagram, and um, Chrissy Glass Knits, um, I know, loves this farm. She's talked about it many, many times. And it is a Vermont farm, and it is Wing and a Prayer Farm. Oh my gosh, I got to meet the, um, the lady. Her name is Tammy. She was really nice. She was super busy, though. Like, I think everybody wants a piece of her kind of thing. Um, but I got to chat with her for a minute, and I bought some of her yarn. So uh, this is funny. This is actually Cormo. So this is Cormo, and this is Cormo, but this is Cormo alpaca. And I'll just show you the label. So the, it says up here in the corner, Wilbur and Fluffhead. So those are the names of the animals, uh, the fiber from the animals. So Wilbur and Fluffhead. And if I remember correctly, Wilbur is the sheep and Fluffhead is the alpaca. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's half wool cormo and half alpaca. And it's 100 grams. I'm not sure what uh, weight yarn this is. It says 148 yards. Um, it doesn't say, it says US 6. Anybody know what that is off the top of their head? I think it's, um, it's probably a bulky. I'm not sure. It doesn't say. But it looks like a bulky. Um, and it was dyed with indigo, but it doesn't really look blue as much as it looks sort of mint colored. I can pull it back here. It's really kind of a pale baby mint. And she actually asked me what I was going to do with it, and I told her that I don't know. <laughs> I basically just wanted some because it's Winged Prayer Farm, and I'm going to be honest, uh, Christy Glass made me buy it. No. <laughs> No, I follow her on Instagram, and I watch her, like, walk around with her sheep and feed her pig apples and all the cute things that she does on her farm and dye, uh, dye her wool and all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah, I really, I just wanted some of her, her yarn. And, yeah, she, so she asked me what I was going to make with it, and I said, I really don't know, but I was thinking, like, based on the color, um, and how soft it is, it's really, really soft, um, Alpaca and Cormo. Cormo is a fine wool and alpaca is just super soft. Um, or all the alpaca that I've ever felt is super soft. So I was thinking that it would be a really pretty, uh, a really pretty baby knit, but um, I don't have a baby and um, my husband and I do want children. Um, but yeah, I don't know when that will happen. So um, yeah, I mean, I can make something sort of for my hope chest, which I've done in the past. Um, maybe I'll show you a couple pictures. Um, I've been thinking about doing like a new segment, um, showing things that I made in the past. And, um, <laughs> or maybe I'll just like put it in here, but um, I have this little um, quilt that I made. It was a little Peter Rabbit quilt. And I have this crocheted bubble blanket that I s never finished. Um, <laughs> and I uh, started probably a couple years ago. Um, I'm going off on a serious tangent. Anyways, my aunt pointed out that I make baby things for other people, but I should probably make things for myself sort of as a hope chest. And she told me that probably a few years ago, um, like, maybe you should make things for a hope chest. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. Like, yeah. <laughs> so that's it for all of the, um, the little purchases that I made. And I made one more purchase. And that is a fleece. <laughs> so I bought my first fleece. This is, fit oh my gosh, you can't, you can't even. My house smells like a barn right now because of this. Um, <laughs> uh, this is Finn, so it's Finn wool, and this is a ram lamb, a Finn ram lamb's wool. <laughs> um, this came from a five month old, and let me see, I don't know if I took the paperwork out. Um, I think I might have taken the paperwork out. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like. So this came from a sheep named Buddy.
and Buddy won an award for his fleece, or the farm did, whichever. Um, yeah, Buddy won an award. I, I can't remember if he was first or second, but he was either first or second. Um, I don't know if it, I don't really know that much about how they judged them, but there were different, there were other sheep that had first and second place awards, so he might have been like the fine wool class or something. I, I really don't know, but, um, yeah, I actually looked at, um, another one of their sheep, I think, um, named Bella, um, and she, that might have been a third place one, um, but I really like Buddy's wool. It's really, really soft. So, yeah, he's a ram lamb, and his name is Buddy. It's only, um, one and a half pounds, and it says that he was five months old, but then on here it says six months old, so I don't know. I don't know how much it matters, but... This is the, this is the farm, so Boondoggle Farm, and this lady, Katie, was, um, so after I bought the fleece, I, I had, so I had thought that maybe I'd like to buy a fleece, but I didn't go there like, I'm buying a fleece. I had just kind of thought, well, I kind of like to, you know, I'm a spinner now, and I'm starting to build my skills, and, um, it just makes sense, like, it's a natural progression that you would, um, buy, or, I mean, if I had sheep, you would shear your own, but I, that's not, that's not happening, but, <laughs> um, anyway, so I bought the fleece, and, yeah, they told me that, um, I should go meet the farmers, that the farmers were vending, and there's, like, a vendor barn, so it, was, it had animals and, um, products for sale, and, uh, yeah, I should have videos of, like, I had, um, videos that I took throughout the day, and, um, hopefully I'll probably have inserted those at the beginning or the end of the video, but, um, so I went and met, um, the farmers, and so I met Katie and her husband, and I can't remember her husband's name, but we chatted a little bit, we talked about Buddy, and we talked about, um, the husband told me that, um, the reason why Buddy was named Buddy is because he's his buddy. <laughs> they were the sweetest people like they were so 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 sweet and I was wearing I'll put a picture in um that I took uh my husband took I was wearing my um holy chevrons hand spun shawl and they the lady noticed it and you know I kind of like I was like oh here you can look at it and she just was so so sweet she literally made me blush um they were like, wow, you're such a good knitter, and oh my gosh, you're such a good spinner, and this is a beautiful shawl, and I was like, stop it. <laughs> Not, I mean, I didn't say that, but, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I have a good spinning wheel, and, and they were like, no, you're a good spinner. <laughs> yeah, um, they were super duper sweet, and they were like, oh, you should come down when we shear, and <laughs> super, super sweet, and I was like, she asked me, she's like, oh, when you make something with this, can you share it with me? Can you email me? And I was like, do you have an Instagram? And we had this whole chat about how, like, she doesn't do other internet things besides email. And I was like, oh, you should really do it. And we talked about, like, how her daughter told her, you know, to get an Instagram. And, um, and uh, I was like, you need to let your daughter sign you up for Instagram so people can, like, share and tag her her wool and she had yarns that she had mill spun um from her wool and all of that and I was like you should get an Instagram and then people can share what they make with your stuff um I know I will <laughs> so so yeah here's a little bit of his fleece I just picked um, a section from the top it's a fine wool and it has a lot of crimp um yeah I don't, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I'm no expert on fleece, but it was a really, really clean fleece, which was one of the selling points for me, was how clean it is. I'll show you. There's some darker pieces in here, which are pretty. And they talked to me a little bit about how I could control, like, the color of the yarn that I, um see if I can. This is really dark. Really, really dark brown to black. 
pieces and there um, I could control um, the color of the yarn that I spin um, because when they send it off to the mill it just gets all mixed together and it turns into sort of a gray um, but I can control it and um, hand card it and yeah I can make it like go from light to dark or I could do like sections of different color I could kind of you know do whatever I want which is the cool thing about being a spinner yeah so that's Buddy he's a fin he's really really soft and he's my first fleece <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm tempted to actually go, like, see him. Um, that would be cool, right? Especially, like, to wear, like, a sweater or something I'd made. And, like, go visit the farm. That would be so, that would be really cool. But, yeah, so that is it for Vermont Sheep and Wool. Um, that's all I got, and I enjoyed my time there. And, yeah, if you live in New England, or, I mean, maybe if you don't live in New England, um, you should come check out Vermont Sheep and Wool. Today is the last day this year, but next year, oh, next year they're going to have um, Jillian Marino. I think I'm saying that right, but she is the um, author of, let me get it. She's the author of this book, which I'm sure if you're a spinner, you've seen before. Um, Yarn Eye Texture, that's how I say it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, she's going to be at Vermont Sheep and Wool next year. So that's cool. And I think you can go, like, um, you, you can um, take, like, a class with her or something. I, I don't know all the details. I just kind of saw. Oh, wait, it's in here. There's the little information um, about, about next year and the 30th anniversary. It's really cool. Yeah, and it's a really small fair, um, but there's some really, really beautiful wool there. Beautiful wool, super sweet people. I can't tell you how nice um, Katie and her husband were from Boondoggle Farm. Like, they were so, so nice. Yeah. Okay, so that is it for that. I think I talked <laughs> way too long <laughs> about that, but, um, but yeah, so... On to um, knitting. <laughs> so knitting, and I don't know where to start because I actually have two new cast-ons and some good progress because it's been a little while. So I think I'll just start with my Find Your Fade. And um, I did get to the lace section on the Find Your Fade. I'll just quickly show it. I don't think I need to, um, to dive deep into all the colors and everything, but... Here it is, and I did start on the lace section. And I can stretch it out a little bit. This color right here is from, it's called Celestial Bodies, and it's from Yarn Jar Shop. All of the other colors are hedgehog fibers. And yeah, I've been kind of, um, this has kind of been weighing on my mind, the fact that this isn't done, and I started it, Oh my god, I almost thought I dropped, oh, I thought I dropped stitches. Um, <laughs> I started this in the spring of this year, and it's October now. Like, I don't know if it was March or what, but I started this in the spring, and I, it's ridiculous that it's not done. So yeah, I've been kind of kicking myself and um, kicking my, pushing myself to get this finished. And I think it will be beautiful when it's done. I can't wait to get to the next color, which is this. And then the last color is this hot pink. This is jelly. I'm sure you've seen this before. Actually, Christy Glass had this in one of her, I don't know which one, one of her projects. But I, yeah. I really need to finish this and I think it's going to be so beautiful. It is pretty springy feeling. Um, so yeah, it'll be great. I mean, I'll wear it whenever I want to, but, <laughs> but, but it'll be good for the spring next year too. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's great. There we go. Yeah. So that's my find your fate. Um, and I have this little, I just have this in this bag that I made. I've talked about it before. I printed it with pears. 
I have this little button on here. Here it says tune in, turn off, unplug. And I kind of like that. It's cool. So yeah, let's see. What else? Oh, I have a finished object. How did I not start with that? I have a finished, I have, I, yeah, a finished object. <laughs> these are really wet. Um, these are my Mrs. Potts socks. So yeah, I finished, oops, don't hit the camera. Um, <laughs> these are my Mrs. Potts socks and I've been knitting them. I don't, I don't know when I started them, but I mean, it hasn't been that long. It has, um, I wore them already. So yeah, my husband and I went fishing for his 30th birthday and I talked about that a little bit. And, um, I was like, Ooh, I need to wear, I need to wear my new hand knit socks. And it was chilly enough to, uh, actually, no, it wasn't. We just got up super early. So it was chilly in the morning, but it was actually really, really, really hot that day. Um, and I think, yeah, I got some sun and everything. Um, standing on a boat, like sun beaming down on you. <laughs> it was really hot. But I wore these in my hunter boots um, because I have to help him like get the boat in the water and everything. And so um, if it's not, I mean, in the, in like in June and July when it's really, really hot, I just wear my flip flops and I just get, you know, my feet wet. But I wore, um, being really early in the morning, it was pretty cold. So I wore my hunter boots and like jeans so the hunter boots are tall enough that I can get in the water far enough to help get the boat in and out um without getting soaked <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah these are my Mrs. Potts socks um they were 56 stitches and they were both toe up knit um two at a time uh this is a fish lips kiss garter garter stitch heel so you just knit instead of purl. Um, instead of purling, you just knit the whole time. And there's nothing really special about them other than, I mean, as far as like the way I knit them, um, I did do some decreasing in this general area and I did do some decreasing right here because I actually kind of have thin ankles. Um, so I did decrease right there where my ankles get smaller. Um, but that's, yeah, that's it. And they're super tall socks. Like I can, like stretch them past the, you can't even see the logo. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is great. And I wore them with my hunter boots and they were wonderful. Like I, they felt great. Um, I didn't feel, yeah, they didn't feel too tight or too loose. They felt comfortable and yeah, finish object. <laughs> I'm in the mood today. <laughs> yeah. So yay! Finish object. <laughs> um. Okay. So what else do I got? Uh, I just want to keep going with. Should I do new cast ons first? Do you guys want to see the new stuff before I show you the other stuff? Okay, I'll show you. So in my mermaid bag, you've seen this before. I'm pretty sure this is new. I don't think I showed this last time. I'm pretty sure this is new cast on. <laughs> Um, I have Halloween socks. It is so appropriate. It's October. <laughs> uh, these are called Little Monsters. And, and this is my own hand dyed yarn. So the pattern, I'll just tell you before I forget, get carried away with the fact that, that I dyed it. Um, the pattern is the Heart Warrior, and this is by Brandy Miller, and she was inspired by her daughter who has a congenital heart disease. And yeah, so she made these socks, and yeah, I'm knitting them toe up two at a time, the same exact way that I knit these. So I'm hoping that they will fit the same. Um, and yeah, uh, the pattern you can start to see. I have like worried a little bit about the fact that this self-striping sock might be too busy for the lace, but I think once I have them on, they'll look really nice. Cause you'll see like, they'll get a little bit stretched and then you'll see um, the lace through the, hold on, let's see if I can get the um, light to kind of go through the, anyways, they're small holes cause it's, I'm knitting with double zeros. These are Chowgu, sorry if I'm not saying that right, Chowgu needles. Um, 
they are double zeros. That's what I use for sock knitting. And that's what I use for these. And 56 stitches. So yeah, this is a 56 stitch version. Which is the smallest version. Um, yeah, because I think, because I'm a loose knitter, um, and I have, I have a size 9 US foot, so uh, somebody who's a tight knitter, yeah, it would be drastically, drastically different. <laughs> Um, cause it, the, I, I don't know why, but the 56 makes is almost sound like I have small feet or I have thinner feet, but I don't. It's just that I'm a loose knitter. Hence the double zeros. Um, yeah, but this is self striping sock yarn and you can kind of see the heart is, the hearts are, um, I think the pattern is, I'm at the point where it's going to start curving back for the top of the heart. Um, and it has, it's hard to see. But it has a cable um, right here and right here. There is a cable going up the side. And I'll just flash it really, really, really quickly because it's it's part of it's a paid for pattern. And um, but yeah, this is the, the picture of the sock pattern that it comes with. But you get two charts, and I don't want um, anybody to really yeah, I don't want to share it because it's a paid for pattern, but I just kind of want to show you what I did. So to um, keep track of, you know, since I'm knitting them both at the same time, and the um, the way you knit them is kind of mirrored. So here's the, you know, you're knitting from here, you're doing the heart, and then you're doing the cable, and then you start with the cable, and then you do the heart. So the pattern um, is a little bit different. So just quickly, I'll just show you there's two <laughs> there's two charts and I put them in a little staples um, clear sheet so that I can just flip it back and forth um, since I'm doing them at the same time so yeah these are my little monster socks and and what's really exciting is that this is my hand dyed yarn so it's like mini self striping um, stripes and they are mint and purple and orange and sort of a burnt umber um, and sort of a black, a really dark gray to black. Um, very Halloween and fall inspired. And that's, this is what it would look like. The back was, is sort of what it would look like um, without a pattern. And yeah, so I have one skein of this. I only dyed two. And I have one skein available. So this is Little Monsters. And I thought that was such a cute name um, because they're little stripes. It just made sense. And uh, yeah, it's October. And as you know, Halloween is coming. It's fast approaching. So if you are a uh, sock knitter and you're interested, I have one of these available. And um, it's uh, on my Etsy shop, which is Vermont Dye Works. And I will have the links below. And if you're interested, you can go check it out. And um, possibly, uh, if you'd like to buy it, you and I will have um, matching socks. Because <laughs> right now, it's two of a kind. Um, and seeing how October is, a, is here now, and um, Halloween is, you know, the 31st, um, I won't be dying any more of this. Um, so, yeah. There's only one available. If you want it, go get it. <laughs> and I'm super excited to see what you do with them if you do. So, yeah. Um, so that is my Heart Warrior socks. And um, there's really not a lot of people that are knitting them right now. There was interest on Ravelry. It was, like, one of the number one patterns for a couple days. Because um, Shamika, uh, she's a Mika Mika shop. Shamika, she was um, interviewed by Christy Glass. Um she shared this pattern and kind of talked about how she had a congenital heart defect or she had a heart surgery or something. I, I can't remember the details offhand, but, um, she talked about how like, this is really important to her and she shared it. So I went and checked it out and bought the pattern. It was half off. I don't know if it still is, but it was, um, it was half off and yeah. And I think I was the first and I still might be the only project on Ravelry right now. Um, for these and my Ravelry is Crafty Garden Sews, just like my Instagram is Crafty Garden Sews. They're both Crafty 
Garden Sews. Um, my, my YouTube, however, is just Crafty Garden. And now my dye, my, my Etsy shop is Vermont Dye Works. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, little monsters, super cute. I'm going to have Halloween socks. Super excited. <laughs> okay, so um, I think I'll save my other new cast on for last. I'll share the other things I've been working on first. Um, so, yeah. I didn't make any progress on my grandpa card again. Um, unfortunately. It, um, yeah, I really haven't made any progress on it. But I plan to. I plan to. I'm going to have to, like, just sit down and spend, like, a whole afternoon one day cranking some of that out because I'd really like to get to the point where I join the two fronts and the back and so I can just start whipping through it but okay so I have um I almost feel like I could say a half object but it's that's not true I have um mostly most of a mitt done so I'm doing the convertible fingerless mitts this is a um, let me see if I have the pattern right here. Nope, that's the grandpa card again. Yeah, here it is. This is, oops, don't show that. Hold on. This is the Tinsel Mitts by Andrea Mowry. And I finished the, um, like, I don't know, the body, the hand of the first mitt. This is my own hand spun yarn. This is um, a fiber club from uh, created by LCB. And yeah, I finished this one. Um, I still have to knit the flap that goes over your palm and finish the thumb. But I decided that instead of starting on the, um, like the thumb or the flap, that I would just go ahead and get the other mitt to the same place. So, sorry, this is a mess in my hair, my face. Um, big disgrace. <laughs> this is the other mitt. I'm just gonna pretend like that didn't happen. Um, this is the other mitt. And it's funny how they look so different. Um, like this one has this very autumnal feel to it. And this one has that bright lime green. Although this one eventually I think will too. Um, probably. But yeah. Um, just have a little bit left to go on this one. Like the ribbing I think. And then I will probably um, do the, the flaps one after the other. And then do the thumbs or something like that. Just to kind of have it so that I'm doing... Um, the same step for each instead of like finishing one whole mitten and then starting the other one I'm trying to do them like sort of in tandem and then um, I don't know do people get mitten syndrome like second mitten syndrome like you do with socks I just thought it was smart to just kind of like do the same thing at the same time because it's already like in your head what you're doing so yeah uh, and Let's see what else is in here this is my um my first stow bag this is a grain line studio pattern and it is the stow bag i sewed this earlier this year and this actually is fabric left over from a shirt that i sewed for my husband i sewed him a was it walden i don't remember i sewed him a, a man's button-up shirt and i'll insert a picture um, and I used the leftover fabric to make this bag. So this is, yeah, the Grain Line Studio Stow Bag. Oh, and I even put a little eyelet um, thingy <laughs> so I can run the yarn through there. And anyways, in here I also have my other hand spun shawl that I'm working on. My other hand spun shawl. I only have one hand spun shawl work um, in progress. But um, my other shawl, which is hand spun which is also created by LCB um, Club Color Fiber. And um, 
yeah, I didn't make any progress on that either. So yeah, I'm gonna quit talking about it. <laughs> but yeah, um, so the mittens, yeah, I got quite a bit done and those will probably be done pretty soon. So I guess the last thing I have for knitting is my new cast on, um, at least to talk about. So the last, the new, my new cast, my other new cast on is in this bag, which I also sewed. Um, I finished it the other night, I think the night before we went to Sheep and Wool. Yes. So Friday night, um, today's Sunday. And this I started, I don't know, a month or two ago. I don't really remember. Uh, I posted, I think, some Instagram stories about it, about, like, trying to decide what fabric to use. And then I kind of, like, got frustrated with it one day because um, it wasn't, one of the seams that I sewed wasn't perfect. And instead of dealing with it, I just put it aside and ignored it. <laughs> but um, I needed a new bag for this big project that I'm starting. And I was like, Oh, man, I really needed a project bag and I couldn't find any. And then I saw this and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I unpicked the little problem area that I had and um, found new love for my bag and finished it. Yeah, it has sunflowers on it. And this is a pin that I got from Nido. It's a yarn store in Burlington, Vermont, which is closing. So, um, they actually just really recently announced that they're closing. And if you watch, um, uh, Legacy Fiber Arts, um, so Chelsea and Sue, they, um, yes, yeah, Chelsea lives in Burlington, Vermont, and she is friends with the, um, the owner of Nido and, and, and some of those, um, yeah, the, of the store. And, uh, she was also talking about it closing down and stuff, which is really sad because it's a nice, it's like fabric and yarn and they had, um, that's where I got the yarn for, I bought, um, this Brooklyn Tweed Arbor from them. Um, yeah, I'm really sad because it was really a modern store. It was beautiful and it had lots of just, I don't know, um, beautiful, beautiful things and it was a great store. So sad to see it go. But yeah, so this is the, actually I might have bought this pattern at their store. It's been a while. I think I did. I think I bought this pattern from them. So yeah, I got this little wool heart at their store. And um, this was some fabric that I got from a local quilting shop. And this is some like leftover from another purse that I made a couple years ago. I wonder if I have a picture of that. I'll insert it. It was like a quilted um, purse that I sewed with little charm packs. It was really cute. Actually, I still have it. It's kind of dirty. I'm not going to show it. Um, <laughs> but inside of my bag, I have <laughs> stitch markers. No, <laughs> I thought it was smart to put them in here. Sorry if it's making a lot of noise, but I have, um, these are just like little jewelry rings that I got from Hobby Lobby. And then I also have, um, like a, uh, little beaded stitch marker and then I took my Mrs. Potts um, stitch marker off. Obviously I finished my socks um, and I just thought it was kind of smart to put them in here. This is uh, repurposed from something I don't remember. But yeah, inside of my bag I have um, a new project. <laughs> so um, I decided to join the Stephen West 2017 Mystery Knit Along, which is the Speckle and Pop. So this is clue one, um, and yeah. So if you um, if if you don't want to be spoiled, um, then I'm sorry. You should probably not watch this part like maybe you could look away while I talk about it but um yeah I'm going to well first I'll show my yarn so I'll show my yarn first and then I'll tell you that I'm about to show I don't have a lot of it done so it's not really much of a spoiler but then I'll show what I have done so I'll show my yarn first 
So I'll start with the, um, the main colors. So this is my first color, and I'll also insert photos of what they look like in skeins. So this is my own hand-dyed yarn, and this is called Rebel Spring. And it is, the name came from a book that I loved reading. Um, I think it's The Fallen Kingdoms. Yeah, I'm sorry, looking at my bookshelf. Um, the Fallen Kingdoms, and yes, I just like this from the colors, this light blue reminded me of that, and I thought it was a beautiful name. So this is Rebel Spring, and then the next color is called Shape Shifter. So this one has um, a little bit of that blue, like it's hard to see um, but it has a little bit of the same blue in there, but it's, it's a little bit darker. It has more purple, it has more red, and it also has darker blue. So that is Shape Shifter. And then my last color is called Woodland Nymph. So this is the darkest color, and these are all very autumnal in my, in my opinion. Like, look how pretty that would go with this. Um, yeah, so this has all the same purples and blues um, and reds, and there's some teal, um, and, uh, but it also is, it has more brown. So, yes, it reminded me of sort of like, I don't know, sort of like a beautiful foresty, and not, um, not like, like forest green, like, like forest floor, earthy sort of woods, into the woods kind of feel. So, um, yeah, I, I was inspired, um, yeah, I thought Woodland Nymph was just the perfect name for this. So, Nymph is a sort of creature, kind of think like fairy, and um, yeah, she's beckoning you into the woods. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are my three main colors. And then I have pops of color. So those are the main colors, and then you have your pops. So the first color that I used was this. These don't have names, they're just little minis. But um, this is a purple with blues and reds. And yes, really, really, really pretty, very sort of autumnal um, fall color. And then, um, uh, I don't remember the order of these. It might be this, ne this might be the next one. Um, then I have this, my camera just shut off. Anyways, so then I have this blue. So that's the next color. So, let's see, those are the two I've shown so far. I'm getting like, I'm gonna juggle these. There's so many. There's a lot of yarn. Okay, and then let's see, I think it might be this one that I have next, which is also a purple, but it's um, a different color purple. So, this one is brighter. It's Trying to like, we can see it. Uh, like I said, I'll insert a couple photos so um, with better lighting, so you can really see what the colors look like. But this is a brighter purple, and it's more of a solid purple than this. This is definitely, you know, more tonal. It has reds and blues and um, different shades in there. And then the next color is this. Almost, ooh, it actually kind of matches my shirt. Yeah, it's sort of this um, burgundy garnet. Um, sort of pinky red. It's a lot of things. It's really, really pretty. Um, I dyed it in multiple steps, so there's a lot of interest in it. It's not just a solid color, um, although it kind of comes off that way. It's sort of semi-solid, but yeah, really pretty. And then my last color is this blue and dark. It's like a, it's like dark blue to sort of chocolate. So that, whoop, these are my pops. And they all go beautifully with 
my um, main color. I can't, I can't even, there's so many. This is why it, it needed its own project bag. There's so much yarn here. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna show the little teeny tiny bit of um, of the of the shawl mystery shawl that I've started. So if you're if you don't want to see, you don't want it to be spoiled at all. Even though there are spoilers all over Instagram, seriously, don't look at Instagram or Ravelry if you don't want it to be spoiled because they're everywhere. Um, the spoiler, like Stephen West spoiler, is actually what maybe would be like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I, I have to. <laughs> you know, I need a new working project. Like, I need a hole in the head. But, yeah, it's it was super pretty. Um, so here's, okay, I'm showing it now. Here is what I have so far. Isn't that gorgeous? I love this blue and the purple. I love it so much. It's just so pretty. And I think the colors are so perfect for this time of year. I think it's perfect for fall and it'll be like transition into winter beautifully. And yeah, I am going to force myself to stay on top of these clues and like get them done so that I have this, I'm going to be like really good about it. You're going to be good about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put a little progress keeper on here and I put them on there so that I can show you guys how much progress I make um, right now there's not a lot but uh, I just started it I think I started it did I start it Friday night maybe um, yeah so I think I started it Friday night I think that's when it was released um, because I was working on the I-Cord edge in the, on the way to the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. It's so pretty. There's not much to show, but I just can't, oh, I just, oh, I'm going to have to knit on this, like, after, after I upload my podcast, <laughs> after I upload the new episode. Yeah. Um, and then I guess I could show you, like, that this has, um, the bag that I have this, I put a pair of scissors in there, um because you're actually changing colors a lot, so um, you need to cut your yarn a lot. But I have these nice deep pockets, and I can show you. Um, uh, I, I don't want to like brag or anything, but I'm super excited because I just got a new phone. Um, so I just got the iPhone 8 Plus, and I upgraded from um, the 6. So I felt like I was way overdue. Um, and this is just so much... I don't know, it's prettier, the screen's brighter, the pictures are nicer. I'm just so happy with this. Anyways, I just want to show you that the pockets are nice and big, so I can put my phone in there easily. So if I just want to carry this around, I can have my phone in there, my scissors, and then it looks pretty on the other side. And then on the inside, it has another pocket. Let's see. On the inside, it has another pocket. So both of the pockets were originally intended to go on the inside, but I sewed one to the outside so I could have that sort of phone access. Um, but on the inside, it also has little um, places for you to put your needles. So you can kind of see it better on this side. You can see the stitching that I did. That's for the needles. So I could put um, crochet hooks, DPNs, you know, uh, I suppose you could put your circulars in there too, um, and uh, and I usually I like to put in this bag. I usually have a crochet hook and some tapestry needles or different things. Um, well, a crochet hook in here, but I'll have like maybe measuring tape and lots of things in here, so you kind of like everything you need in one. So yeah, that is that is my new uh, cast on and my first mystery shawl, my first Stephen West mystery shawl. So exciting. Um, so I'll show you something interesting related to that. I have, um, two skeins of Woodland Nymph. So that was the third, uh, color in my, um, Speckle and Pop mystery shawl. So that was the third color and I will insert better photos of it. But this is my own hand-dyed yarn. Um, again, it's 
Vermont Dye Works on Etsy. And this one has been reskained. There you go. Really, really, really pretty. Beautiful, beautiful colors in there. And this one has not been reskained, so you can kind of see like the chunks of color. So there's, yeah, like I said, there's blues, there's browns, there's purples, um, teals, uh, burgundies, reds, just almost sort of a rosy mauve, mauve color. Um, there's so many colors in this. It's just so pretty to look at. Like as a whole, it kind of comes off just as a dark color. But um, when you look closely, it just has all these beautiful, beautiful colors in there. So this is Woodland Nymph, and I have two of these, and they are currently for sale in my Etsy shop. Um, and I guess while I'm showing those, I'll just show the other items that I have um, in my shop. So I also, I already showed Little Monsters, which is a self-striping, mini-striped yarn. And then I also have Hidden Huntress. So I have, I have two of these. So I have Hidden Huntress 1 and Hidden Huntress 2. And this is also um, inspired by a book, but also inspired by the fall foliage. So I have really, really beautiful fall um the color of the, the leaves are changing right now. If you don't know, you probably do. Vermont is known for its fall foliage. Um, it is the most beautiful time of year around here. Uh, everywhere you drive is gorgeous. You know, you have just, just the most beautiful, beautiful views um, this time of year. And yeah, so I have some really beautiful dark leaves um, in my yard. Um, tree with dark leaves and this color kind of reminds me of that it's sort of a cranberry to burgundy color and um, yeah this one has this one's slightly lighter than this one so this is hidden huntress one this is hidden huntress two this is slightly more cranberry this is slightly more burgundy and this one has more pops of blue and this one has like darker, deeper sort of browns, um, but they both have blues and reds and pinks and purples and um, they're both just a mix of really, really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful colors and um, it goes really, really well with Woodland Nymph. I'll show you the one that's been reskinned. These would go really, really well together. So yeah, that's Hidden Huntress. And then I have um, this I renamed. I originally thought about calling this Mystic River, but I renamed it to be Raven's Revenge. And I renamed it that because the colors remind me of um, Mystique, a.k.a. Raven, from the X-Men. And yeah, if you've ever seen her, she's blue. So this is mostly blue. But it has really pretty fun pops of pink and light blue and red and purple, a um, little bit of brown and green. I mean, there's a lot of really gorgeous colors in there. And it has little speckles, pops of different color. It's really, really beautiful. I was tempted to keep this before, like, I chose the... Um, the skeins for the speckle and pop. I thought I was going to keep this, but then I decided that I can't keep all of the yarn. So I have to, um, I had to, I had to put it in the shop. <laughs> Somebody will probably get this and be super in love with it. I, I know it's gorgeous. Um, so the last one that I have to show is this purple, gray, and green speckled yarn. So it is sort of purple and lavender with light gray. And then um, pops of this sort of emerald jade 
um, colored uh, green. And I named, because of Halloween's coming up, um, like I've had like Halloween things on the mind and, you know, spooky stuff. And so, I don't know, I was just like trying to think of a name and Living Dead Girl popped in my head. And uh, if you don't know, that is, a, it's also a 90s song. So a song from like, I don't know, mid to late 90s. Um, I'm not going to sing because I'm a terrible singer, but <laughs> Living Dead Girl is a song. And um, yeah, so I thought that was a cute name. But um, besides the name, it's just a really pretty skein of yarn. I am I really love purple. It's one of my favorite colors. Um, yeah, and I think this is just gorgeous. Halloween or not, it's just a pretty skein of yarn. But isn't that a cute name? <laughs> Yeah. So, um, I think that's it for, yeah, that's all of the, uh, the skeins that I have, um, to show you for my Etsy store. Um, so that's it for that section. And now I'm going to talk about spinning. Um, I can, I think I forgot to mention, I, d I totally forgot to mention that I am hosting a spackle, a sock spin along, knit along. So, uh, Jade from So Perfect Pearls and I are hosting a sock spackle. So um, we have a few members now, which is I'm really happy about. Like at first I was nervous that we were only going to have like one or two people, but we've had some people start to um, filter in. And, uh, and yeah, we have prizes for the spackle and lots of people are starting to get progress done. Um, yeah, uh, one, one of, oh, uh, Mando Bug. Hi, Mando Bug. Uh, Amanda, uh, she has a podcast, and yeah, uh, I'll link her below. She decided to join us, and I think she's already done spinning her singles, which are rainbow-colored gorgeousness. It's really, I'm, I'm actually really jealous. <laughs> so this is what I have. This is, um, Into the World, uh, Romney fiber and it was a club colorway inspired by Princess Bride. It's called Iocane powder and it is blue and gray and purple and green and I'm spinning it to be a sort of self striping. It's going to probably have big chunks of color but um, sort of a semi self striping effect and it's going to be a chain ply or a Navajo ply. So yeah, and I have been spinning this really slowly, uh, which is not the norm for me. Um, normally, I am like, go, 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 go on my spinning. Um, <laughs> Jade pointed out that um, that I'm a fast spinner. She said I put her to shame. I don't think that's true. I think that Jade has a lot going on. She's a very busy woman. Um, <laughs> but, um, but for me, I, I kind of like, when I start spinning, I just want to keep spinning. Like, I just want to like, at least make, you know, an out probably 30 minutes to an hour's work on it. If I can, um, every, probably every, every evening, you know, like put on Netflix or a TV show or something and just kind of like spin along. And so I can get the yarn done. I don't like to just leave it sitting, um, I just feel like if I don't keep the momentum up that I'll lose interest in it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, but anyway, so I thought I would slow down a little bit, slow my roll and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and try to take my time with it. Um, so I think I'm nearly done with the first half. I'm spinning it in half, half and half, and then skeining it separate. So I'll have two skeins at the end. So they'll just be all set and ready to go for two at a time knitting. Sorry, my cat walked by and I was distracted. I thought he might come visit. He's not going to come visit. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is what I have done. It's on my Acres Works bobbin. I always feel like I stumble over that Acres Works bobbin, Acre Works. Um, which I love. This is my favorite bobbin to use. If I have a choice, I spin on this bobbin. And sooner or later, I will be purchasing more of these. I love these. They're great. <laughs> if, if I, um, when I spun these mittens, 
I thought, oh, I'll give my wooden bobbin some love. And so I tried to spend the entire four ounce on the bobbin, and it was just super full. Um, and there is no way you can ply back onto the same bobbin, whereas I can ply back onto this. You cannot ply back onto the wooden ones. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Let's just say the end of that spin was really, really, really frustrating. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> yeah, so eventually I'll be getting more of these because these are really nice. And there's just a lot more room on them. Um, so if you have four ounces or probably four and a half, I'm not really sure, um, you could easily spin that onto here. Anybody know what the max, like, you can get? Um, or what's the max ounces you've got on one of these? This is for the Lindrum. Yeah. Anyway, so I think that's all of the um, actual spinning I've done. But I also have, so spoiler alert, I'm going to show the Into the World Club colorway. This is the September 2017 um, Into the World Club Fiber. So I'm going to show it now. This is um, Targi. And it's A Girl Has No Name. I keep forgetting to look up where that comes from. It sounds familiar, and I know it because they do, like, themed things, that it comes from something particular, but I don't remember. I, I can't recall. Like, it's like it's tickling my brain or something, but I don't know what it is. Um, and it's so funny that I kind, of, I kind of feel like these colors have been, like, my colors recently. Like, I have been in this kind of color vibe lately and it's so funny that um that yeah I felt like um <laughs> into the world had my uh had my number sort of <laughs> so this is Targi oh yeah there we go it's got um this sort of raspberry color teal chocolate a little bit of gray and it's really soft and squishy um and i have been ignoring it because when i first got it i was like "Ooh, pretty and um i was like no put it away you're doing the sock spackle you can't play with that right now <laughs> and you don't know how hard it was yesterday when i got home with all of my goodies from vermont sheep and wool like that natural colored cormo to not just want to like play with it um it's so hard <laughs> but yeah so that is the September color way. Um, yeah, so I think that's enough for today. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!